Before we commit all the changes, I want to do two more changes or refactoring. In other words, to make our code clean and more maintainable. If you take a look at these two files, artifact not found exception, wizard not found exception. Okay. Now, what if we have Hogwarts users? What if we have more domain models? Does that mean we have to create an exception per domain model? Then we have a user not found exception, or maybe student not found exception, or staff not found exception, or professor not found exception. That's tedious. And if you look at the code in these two classes, they are very similar. So can we combine them into one class and call that class, for example, object not found? And this object not found exception can be reused or shared by different domain models. For example, artifact can use it, wizard can use it, users can use it, professor can use it, and so on and so forth. So let's do it. First, let's create a very general exception called object not found exception. Okay. Next, let me do some copy and paste. Let's go to artifact not found. Let me copy this line. Let's go back. So this one extends runtime exception. And then let's create a constructor. So the first formal parameter will be what kind of object? Is it an artifact or wizard? So let's call it string object name. The second formal parameter is the non-existent ID. In this case, it will be string ID. Let's break the string here. Continue here. All right. And also let's insert a space here. And a space here. String concatenation is always pretty tricky in Java. And I heard that Java in the future will include template strings or template literals. That will make this much easier. But for now, this is the way we do it. Now let's create the second one for ID of type integer. Because remember, the type of the artifacts ID is string, but the type of wizard and the user's ID is integer. So that's why we have to have two constructors. So this is a little bit redundant. Next, let's replace the artifact not found exception and the wizard not found exception in many different Java classes with this object not found exception. Since this is pretty tedious, I will pause the video and look for the appearances of artifact not found exception and wizard not found exception. See you in a moment. 2000 years later. Okay. I think I have changed all the artifact not found exceptions and wizard not found exceptions to object not found exceptions. All of them are in artifact service, wizard service, artifact service test, wizard service test, artifact controller test, and wizard controller test. All right, next, we need to modify this exception handler advice because now we no longer need to handle these two exceptions. So let's get rid of this. And instead, we're going to use object not found exception dot class. Okay, here also the name should be changed. Handle object not found exception. 
and we can be more specific in the formal parameter. Okay, now next, let's get rid of these two classes. Delete. And here, delete. Okay, and nobody's complaining. All right, good. All right, we have made some changes. And every time I make a change in my code that already works, I feel not safe. Then how do I make myself feel safer? That's right, by executing test cases. So let's come here, right click, and run tests in Java. And hopefully they will all pass. Looks good. Yeah, they all pass. Although tests cannot prove or guarantee that your code is bug free, but at least it gives you a peace of mind. And it lets you know that the modification you just made didn't break any tested code. Okay. Let me close this. Our second refactoring or improvement will have something to do with the long URL. So let's take a look. Artifact controller and then wizard controller. Oh, okay. So here, API v1, API v1. And if we look at the tests, API v1. Here we have API v1, API v1. It seems like this API v1, this base URL, is everywhere. Now think about a scenario. Let's go to the API documentation. So right now we're using this API version 1 as base URL. So API v1, artifacts, and so on and so forth. Now what if the API documentation is upgraded to v2? Now we're doomed. What happened is we as developers of the server side have to go here, here. So this is easy because it's a class level annotation. But here is not, right? The API v1 is scattered in our code, like this and this. So we have to go to everywhere to find those API v1 and change it to API v2. Can we extract the API v1 base URL? and put it in one place. So if API documentation is bumped up to v2, we're going to just change one place and apply to everywhere in controller or control test. Because right now, API v1 is hard coded everywhere in our code. This is a bad code smell. So instead of defining it in our program, we really need to externalize it into our properties file. That is, on the resources, this application.yaml properties file. Here is how we define it. OK, make sure there's no space here. API end point base dash URL. API v1. So we define this base URL in this application.yaml. Now let me close it. And then let's go to the controller first. Let's delete this. Then how do we reference something we define in application.yaml? Here is the syntax. Dollar sign, open, close, curly braces. API dot end point dot base dash URL. So make sure the names here match exactly to the names here. API endpoint base URL. Okay, save. Now let me copy this and paste it into wizard controller. All right, does it work? 
well, hopefully it will work, right? Then how do we know? Let's launch all the tests, right? So that's an important usage of test is to see that if we break our tested code. So right click, run tests in Java, and hopefully they will all pass. Hopefully. It looks good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, they all passed. That means this works, right? As you can see here, we're not hard coding API slash V1. Instead, we define a property, and in our code, we refer to a property, and the value will be brought in, okay? Actually, it will be injected in. Next, let's do the same thing for the two test classes. So let me close this. Okay, now the way we do this is a little bit different because we're going to define a field. So let's call this string base URL. Then how do we initialize this field? So here is the syntax. Add value. Here, we're gonna pass the syntax we wrote previously. Dollar sign API dot endpoint dot base URL. So basically, here tells Spring, hey, please go to application.yaml file, retrieve the value, and inject it into base URL. So when the test case is launched, base URL is already equal to slash API slash V1, that's fantastic, right? Now next, we're gonna do some tedious work. Let's use this to replace the current mock MVC URLs. This dot base URL plus, let me make it larger so you can see it. Delete. Copy. Now again, this will be some tedious and repetitive work. I'm gonna pause the video while I make those changes. I will see you in a moment. 2,000 years later. Okay, I have done all the tedious work of doing a lot of finding and replacing. Now, let's try to see if this refactoring does not break the current code. Okay, so let's go here, right click, and run tests in Java. If it fails, uh, we at least we know where to fix the problem. Okay, so there's one test case failed. It's right here. Ah, uh, there's a typo here. This is good, right? Apparently my command key is not working very well since I was supposed to do command save, but accidentally I put S there. If you don't test, this error will be hidden there for a long time and God knows when it will be discovered. Okay, so let's run again. Okay, they all passed. So we made two modifications. Number one is that we created a very general not found exception called object not found exception that can be shared by different domain models like artifact or wizard or user and so on and so forth. The second modification is that we extract API slash V1, the base URL into the property files. This process is called externalization is that we do not hard code something in the code. Instead, we put it in a properties file. Modifying the property file is much easier than modifying Java code. To just make sure uh, everything's working, let's do some API integration testing. Just in case. I don't think there's a problem, but you know, we're human beings, right? We never know. In many times, we're overconfident. Let's toggle over to Postman. Send. Okay, we still have this. Pretty good. And send. 
Oh, by the way, you can automate this, so you don't have to sit there and click send. Okay, Postman is very powerful. But here, let's just uh, click through. Okay, looks good. Okay. All right. Next, let's push this to GitHub and close issue number two. Git status. Okay. Many modifications and many new stuff. So first, let's git add all. New file modified. Good. All right. Then git commit. Wizard crud. Done. Close issue number two. Okay, before we commit, I want to let you know that I actually have already checked all the user stories under this issue. So I check all of them. That means I'm done with all the tasks, all the user stories, and it's okay to close. Okay. All right. So this is git commit wizard crud down close issue number two. Okay, next, git status, working tree clean. Let's switch to main. As you can see here, the main branch is pretty clean, no change at all. Then git pull, just in case we got some updates on the remote main branch. So it's already up to date, very good. Then git switch to wizard crud okay git merge main okay already up to date very good now next let's git push let's copy this push okay let's toggle over to github All right, so we have this uh, new branch, compare and pull request. Wizard crud down, close issue number two. Make sure you assign this pull request to some reviewers, but in this case, I don't have any reviewers. Okay, so I'm gonna create pull request. So no conflict, so we can just merge pull request. Now, as I said before, in some companies or teams, not everyone has the authority to merge pull requests because the main branch is always a protected branch. Only the admins or the team leaders have authority to really merge a pull request. Okay? But in this case, I'm the only guy. I'm wearing multiple hats. I'm the committer, I'm the reviewer, I'm the repository admin. Okay? So let me just merge pull request. Confirm merge. Okay, now it's merged. And we can safely delete this wizard dash crowd branch. But again, I will leave it there for your reference. Now let's go to issues. As you can see, now we have only three open issues. There are two closed right here, artifact and wizard crowd. Then let's go back to IntelliJ. Let's um, switch again. And you know this is not true, right? Because we need to do git fetch and then git merge, but we can combine them into one command called git pull. Okay, so now as you can see, the main branch actually has all the new features we added. For example, here we have this uh, API v1 as API endpoint base URL. Right now we're on main branch. And in here in the testing, we have this, right? So we're done. Next, let's work on assign an artifact to a wizard issue. I will see you in the next video.